Hello, I'm Jason. Welcome to lesson nine, exercise number one. Here we're going to continue working with methods and classes, and here we're going to change our methods so that they require arguments or parameters to function. And we've done this before. If you remember back lesson one, lesson two, we worked with methods in Java. We learned how to pass numbers down to the method, have a calculation be performed down here, and then the result is returned back up to the top. So we're basically doing the same thing, but we're going to do it with a class method. So the question is, we will continue working with the grocery store class, copy and paste the code from the previous exercise to define the class, instantiate the objects, and assign the values. That's kind of standard stuff. Then we're going to add two new methods to the grocery store class. So we're not deleting a method or anything, we're just adding additional methods to the class. And here are the methods. They're very similar. One of them is called Apple Revenue Target. You know, a lot of times when you're running a business, you want to, you may have target revenue in mind. So you might want to make $300 on this particular item in your store. And you may want to calculate, well, how many items do I need to sell uh, at that price in order to reach my revenue uh, target? So we're selling apples and oranges. And so we're going to have an Apple Revenue Target and an Orange Revenue Target. So for each case, it's basically the same thing. The method's going to take as an argument right, the target revenue we'd like to make just by selling apples in this case. The method then calculates how many apples we need to sell to meet our target and returns this answer to the caller. So it's basically simple division. If I know I want to make $100 on apples, I just divide by the price of the apple, and that tells me how many apples I need to sell. That's what this method's going to do. Exact same thing is going to happen for oranges. We're going to pass to the method an argument, which is going to be the target revenue for oranges. The method will calculate how many oranges I need to sell. Now remember, we're just doing a class definition. So we're, we're generating the methods down there as sort of general templates. The actual price of an apple or price of an orange is going to depend on the actual store that we're dealing with. In this case, the Houston store or the Seattle store. Those, those, that information is going to be stored uh, when we create the object. So uh, after we create these things in the main method, we'll use these methods to print the following. How many apples are needed to earn $1,050 in the Houston store? How many oranges are needed to earn this much money in the Seattle store? And how many apples are needed to earn $744 in the Orlando store? So everything starts the same. We're instantiating our store. Uh, our three stores, Houston store, Seattle store, and Orlando store. And then we're populating the information in, uh, you know, all this stuff is the same, but the relevant pieces are going to be the prices of the apples and the oranges because that's going to be different for the different stores. Now let me skip down below to the grocery store class, which is down here. The stuff at the top is not changed. This is just, uh, you know, the information, the price of apples and oranges and, and uh, how many we're selling per year. And then we have this method that we've previously used, which is to calculate the gross revenue of that store. We call that method. Notice there's no arguments for this method because it we don't need an argument for it. If we're talking about the Seattle store, we just call this method and it uses all of the information in the class to figure out how much money that store has made. Now we create another method. Notice that we're still inside of the grocery store class. This method resides inside of that class. Closing curly brace for that method is here. Directly below, we create another method. Here's the opening and cur closing curly braces, and here's the final method, opening and closing curly braces. This final curly braces goes along with the class definition. So everything is inside of the class. You see this method here is inside of the class, and this method here is also inside of the class. They're very simple methods. So one of them is called Apple Revenue Target. It takes as an argument or a parameter um, the, a, a local variable that we're calling revenue. So we're going to pass it how much money we want to make in apples. That's a double value uh, because theoretically you could have you could have a target that's 550.25. Um, you could have a, a decimal value. So we're going to use a double argument. We have the word double out in front of the name here because we plan to calculate a division which in general can result in a decimal. So we're going to return a double value back. And the return statement is here. Notice that I, I'm not telling it to return a variable name or just a number. I'm telling it to return the result of a calculation. That's perfectly valid to do. I could structure this method differently. I, I could do this calculation, assign it to another variable, and then return that variable. But I'm just showing you you can wrap it all together. What you're doing is you're returning whatever number you pass to this divided by the price of an apple. 
Notice again, there's no dot notation in here because when you're defining your class methods, they're just templates. You're not going to define, uh, a, you don't need a dot notation because this is a general thing that applies to any object of the class. Whenever you call it, it's going to use the information for that object. So now we're just basically using Apple retail price, which is one of our class variables up here, right? And it's also a double. So basically we're taking a double value passed to the to the method divided by another double value that gives me a double answer and I'm returning that from where I have been called all right and then I've got that closing brace there uh, stops and ends that method and now I have another method called orange revenue target it's returning again a double value it's taking a double value notice I also use the word revenue here when you have these parameters this thing called revenue is local only to this method so when you come in let's say you pass fifty dollars down here then locally inside this method this variable will be created and use the value of fifty dollars to do the calculation when the methods over this variable is gone it's only active whenever the, the the method is basically being run if I come down and send thirty five dollars to this one this variable called revenue has a scope that's only inside of this method so the fact that they have the same name doesn't cause any confusion because their scope is limited to, to the individual methods here in any case whatever we pass as far as money gets divided by the retail price of an orange so if I want to make a hundred dollars I divide by how much an orange costs that's how many oranges I need to sell and I'm returning that back to the top and then I go back up to this is the class here up to the main method after we store everything inside of the object so I have a Houston object Seattle and Orlando we store the information and then I just have my print statement so here I have one print statement Houston target thousand dollars and fifth thousand fifty dollars of Apple sales next print statement need to sell and here I'm calling the method notice it's Seattle store uh, well, I, actually I jumped down a little bit but for Seattle if my target is 620 of orange sales then I'm gonna call the method Seattle store dot orange revenue target and I'm passing a value of 620 down to the method and then I just have the word oranges at the end there alright this actually should be apples because that's an Apple one so starting from the top here for Houston for the the goal of 1050 I need to sell I'm calling the method here which is part of the Houston store object I'm passing a value of thousand fifty dollars so it bounces down to calculate the Apple uh, the apples here I pass one thousand fifty into this variable I take one thousand fifty divide by the price of an Apple for the Houston store and I return the answer back up to where it was called from which is this print statement so the answer gets basically shoved right into the print statement uh, there I do the same thing for the uh, Seattle store notice it says Seattle store here orange revenue target of six hundred and twenty dollars so the result of this is going to be how many oranges I need to sell and then for Orlando I pass seven hundred and forty four dollars to the Orlando object and his version of the Apple revenue target so I'm calculating how many apples I need there so let me go ahead and run this guy Houston target in order to sell a thousand fifty dollars of apples I need to sell one thousand and sixty point six apples for Seattle to meet this revenue target I need to sell this many oranges for Orlando to sell this many dollars I need to sell this many um, uh, apples there notice I'm getting decimals back for everything well you can't really sell a thousand sixty point six apples or six hundred eighty one point three oranges we know that but you know when you're doing calculations with dollars and cents a lot of times you're going to get a uh, decimal here so we're returning double values back to get an exact answer if I were really running this business I would round up and I would say well to meet this target I need to sell 1061 apples that's how I would interpret the results but we're carrying all of the accuracy down we could do this with integers I mean I could I could do it with integers or you know or, or use one of the math functions to do the rounding for me if I really wanted to but for this simple example it's it's pointless to do that your code is certainly probably gonna look differently than mine mostly what I want you to do is notice that for these classes you can have multiple functions now we have or methods we have three methods one of them calculates the gross revenue of the store one of them takes as an argument some money and it calculates how many apples I need to sell to make that much money in apples the other one takes some money in terms of a revenue target for oranges it calculates how many oranges I need to sell and so these are all part of the grocery store class because they're all 
basically talking about this construct that we have for the grocery store. So it makes sense to group them all together. And then my code is very readable because I can almost read it like a book. Houston store, Apple revenue target, passing a number, and then that passes back the result. This is how you use parameters for methods and classes. It's very, very similar to what we've done before, uh, but I want you to get some practice with it. So hopefully your code looks like mine. If not, tweak it, play with it. Make sure you understand and follow me on to the next lesson in Mastering Java.